guys, welcome back to Ask HR with Etona, your channel for authentic HR content. Today also I'm here with Yvonne, she's going to be sharing some really great tips with us. We mentioned in our previous video that we're going to delve more into the format and structure of what your CV should look like. And anytime you think CV, always remember the statistics that we shared in the previous video that every corporate job attracts 250 CVs. Thousands apply, but only 250 people have their CVs engaged with. Out of that, only six people will be called for an interview and only one person eventually gets the job and you want to be part of the six and that one person that got the job right even sure yes yeah, so today we are going to be looking at the structure so when we say cv structure formats what's what is it that's um one size fits all or you just have to tailor to suit your level whatever okay. so um when you talk about the format of a cv it depends on your level of experience that influences the type of format you should use for your CV. Right. So an entry level CV will definitely take a different format from a middle to senior level CV. So basically, those are the two categorizations. If you're an entry level or you're a mid senior level, your CV will take different formats. Right, right, right. So let's say I'm an entry level person. What should my CV format look like? What are the components? What are the things that I should talk about? Because I've met a lot of entry-level people who don't even have CVs. And sometimes when they bring what they have, it's just like, I can't even know what to call that. I know, right? Okay, so um, as an entry-level person, okay, so it's a basic information that you are out of school. You may not have work experience adequate work experience let me put it because i mean some entry level have done a couple of internships but it is clearly you are clearly not an experienced professional and so your format should start with your career objective what do you intend to achieve in any role you get what do you intend to achieve so you put that clearly as your career objective an example could be a finance graduate looking for opportunities in the financing sector where I could put my knowledge and skills to bear to achieve organizational goals or you're looking at gaining experience in the finance industry. Like that's your objective, why you pass, why you want that particular role. And then from that, you tailor into your educational experience because that is what you have as an entry level yeah. person. So unlike a senior level mate who has work experience and you want to go there, you highlight your educational qualifications. So you list them in order of, I mean, from the most recent. Now people list as far back as the pre crutch they attended. Senior level is the list you should, I mean, as an entry level. Once you state your senior level, that should be the last. You shouldn't go beyond that. You know, talking about your JHS and your pre crutch all those information are not necessary. Now, after you've listed out your educational qualification, the next thing you can also do it. Your work experience and over here i'm talking about internships that maybe you did in the course of your work now some most people tell you that oh i don't have any work experience i've not they didn't do any internship but you speaking to them you realize that they even maybe they were a shop attendant at a particular of maybe their mom's shop or they were assisting a friend in a front desk room so all those experiences are relevant. It all depends on how you craft it. Right. Yes. So you could put there as an intern with this particular shop and your duties and responsibility was interacting with customers. It's a form so of... So it, it, for an entry level person, it boils down to language and how you capture properly the things that you you've did. done. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because I think that for most uh, recruiters, they always say for an entry level person, they will hire you for attitude and they train you for the skill exactly. because they know that you, you don't, don't necessarily have, exactly. have those exactly. skills. So once you're able to get those day at work experience, the next could be maybe your training or leadership experience. Back in school, you were an SRC executive, you list them out there, some of the key or significant things you did as an SRC executive, or maybe you were even the course rep, mm -hmm. you list them there. Then you move to your key skills. Now, in all the things you have done, you may have acquired certain basic skills like 
I mean, those transferable skills like communication, um, teamwork, you list them there as your key skills. And then you can conclude with your hobbies and then your references. And it's very important that in stating your hobbies, you don't go stating um, very <laughs> it's interesting it's hobbies like I enjoy sleeping. No, actually, I've seen CVs that have that. And wow. I decided to engage the person on that. I, I think your hobbies are interesting. Can you just. Um, the person is defending how that rest is very important, so she, she uh, really enjoys and so resting. You put sleeping as your yeah, hobby. As your I mean, hobby. that that cannot be. Yeah. So I mean, people put things like surfing the internet. I think you should be more professional in even your hobbies. It could be a sporting activity, or even if it's surfing the internet, you could, there, you could rather use research, which is more, which yeah. sounds more, I mean, professional than just surfing the internet for what. Because I've got people on the job whilst work is going on, screaming at us, I mean, pornographic sites and all sorts of things because it's their hobby. Yeah. They save the internet. <laughs> so you should, yeah. I mean, it should be more professional, professional. if you are researching, right. you are looking out for information on your job. Right. And that is a plus. And then for your references, a minimum of two as an entry level should be fine. And you should state it as an entry level, unlike a middle senior level that it may not be required because already your professional qualifications and your experience would already speak to your qualifications and what you can do. So in summary, that should be it for an entry level. Okay, so can you just run through that uh, structure again? Supposing someone is taking notes. No, okay, like... so in summary, as an entry level person, you first start with your career objective, followed by your educational experience, your work experience, your key skills, your hobbies and then your references and note in writing your key skills your microsoft skills are also important so you could state some of the microsoft tools you are familiar with like excel word powerpoint outlook it's important you list them out there since this is an entry level cv so yeah. what's your take on the reference bit for a middle to senior level management is it necessary okay because there's this whole debate about should I list it? Should I just write available on request or should I just leave it? Okay, so for me, I would, I would not, I wouldn't even put it there at all because as a senior to middle level person, I already have a profile. And so if a potential employer wants to validate any information about me, they would first of all ask me to provide that information and then provide relevant persons that can testify or I mean validate that information and so I don't see any need to put in references available upon request when they need it they would let me know let yeah. you know. right so for in that same light the middle to senior levels person CV would have a totally different format Definitely. so I'll just um, let us go through that format for a senior person now one of the things you really want to highlight which for me is the first thing should be your profile and when we say profile what are we talking about we want to see the things that you have done how many years you've been in a role like that that shows that you can do you know what you're asking them to give you and also what are some of the projects or things that you've tackled practically i've seen profiles that are about a page long and you don't want to do no. that your profile can be between four, four to lines, five yeah lines yeah. about five sentences and you are good to go so maybe i'm a marketing professional with so so and so years experience in this and this and then you highlight some of the key, key skills. skills so for instance i'm a marketing professional with over seven years experience in the marketing industry i've managed things like brands i've managed research market analysis and other things so those are the things that you want to highlight so that we see because we said that the recruiter is using six seconds. So if your profile can make them see something that will get them hooked, that will be a plus for you. And the years of experience is very relevant in your profile as a professional, as a mid, a mid to senior, mid to senior level person. And so after your profile, you want to highlight your areas of expertise, expertise. which is very important because you've been in the space for seven years and above. Yeah. There are certain things that you become really good, good at. at. Yeah. So because the person will read all your four, to five pages there are things that i need to bullet list them in there so that you know it just hits the eye the moment i pick your cv to yeah. see now for 
and made to senior level person your education is very important but beyond that what the recruiter is looking to see is that you are able to do the work the work so for an entry level person you really highlight your education because that's what you have but for a mid to senior level person after your areas of expertise you'd want to focus on your work experience so what's it that you've done over the years and if you watch the previous video we talked about using positive language and power words action words you tell a story paint a picture let's see you in action so you supervised you were in charge of you oversee this project so things like that so we see you in action in your work experience section now if there are other projects that you've done you want to list some of those there and particular achievements yeah. so you quantify achievements. yes you yeah. you list those in there as well then you come to your education so we mentioned that it's not necessary to go as far back you know we mentioned relevance your cv should be relevant to the job in question if your crutch and basic school doesn't have anything to do with the job it's not important yeah. for you to put it there that's why sometimes you pick someone who has eight years experience and the person already has um eight pages eight, pages, yeah. eight years eight, eight pages, pages yeah. it's just a, a lot of yeah. things so you can take those things all out. relevant yes and make the cv really concise yeah. yeah now for a professional you probably have gathered some certifications training seminars and if you are in a very good organization then for the trainings you are going all the time so i've also seen cvs where people listed 20 trainings training they've attended and sometimes they are not even relevant to the job in question okay it's next and then the other thing they do is they add all of that to the education section i advise that create another section for professional qualifications seminars and trainings and just bullet a few of those that impact the That's role exactly. that you are you are very being, important uh -huh. yeah. so you don't just want to list every training you've ever done in your life it just makes the cv bulky yeah. and so, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to do that then after that you mention your hobbies hobbies are important even for a mid to senior level person because you, people want to see that other side of your personality outside of work mm -hmm. and we always advise as Yvonne said that mention some something mention things that are intellectually stimulating so like research yeah. reading it's Mentoring, okay if you, coaching. And, you know things like that you may like other fun things which is okay but by all means don't say that your hobby is sleeping yeah it's not it doesn't paint yeah. a very nice picture of who you are so that's it for the structure for um a mid to senior yeah. level person your personal information limit that to your contact information your profile your areas of expertise your work experience education professional certifications trainings and seminars if there are any your hobbies and you're good to go a very clean concise yes. cv so you've seen a job that you are applying for we spend the first 15 minutes reviewing the job description and tailoring your cv to suit that particular jd so what you are basically doing is look out for the key skills that that job requires and highlight those on your cv it's very important to to Put together a very good cv that is relevant to the particular role you are applying for i mean it's the reason most people do not have their cvs being looked at because they have a generic cv they apply they use for every, every role. Job. so in the, before you apply for the next job just think about the 15 minutes rule spend 15 minutes looking at the job description and 15 minutes redrafting your cv to help you get that particular job here all the best in your job search even as you put together a winning resident or the final thing which i mentioned in the previous video that it's okay to get help because this work someone else does and is very good at it writing yes. resumes yes, yes. yes there are people who are actually certified experts. resume experts, yeah. right? yes so you'd want to get help if you know that i'm not very good with drafting this myself get help or get some guidance and i think it's also relevant that 
no matter who does your CV, make sure that the information there is a true reflection of who you are and you'll be able to articulate that information on your CV to anyone as much as you can, even though you might not necessarily be the one who did it. Also, we'll share um, an information in the description box, resources that can help you reach out to people who can uh, work on your CV and make it a, a winning one. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a lot and will go back to work on your particularly the 15 minutes rule. Make sure you take that 15 minutes and tailor your CV properly to a particular job you are trying to look for. Please subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Share your comments with us and like and share the videos as well. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you get our next video. Thank you so much. Bye.